Ere we begin, I would like to offer my gratitude to Masters Thancred and Urianger. It is no small feat to infiltrate the Imperial capital and live to tell the tale, much less in times of civil war. Thanks to them, we may plot our course in full knowledge of how the winds blow in Garlemald. Full glad are we to have been of service. But, verily, such dangers as we did encounter pale into insignificance next to those faced by our comrades. An Asian, armed with the might of Bahamut, bent on bringing about the final days. Theatrix. He sought only to make a show of the power at the Telephoroi's disposal. But since then we have seen no sign of this fan Daniel or his worm. And while we've done what we can to bolster our defenses, there's no telling where he might strike next. Whenever and wherever it may be, we must use the intervening time to learn more of our enemy. It was with this in mind that we dispatched scouts to investigate the towers. Our advance party took longer than expected to return. And when they did, they tried to kill us. Luckily, I'd seen that sort of thing before, and we were able to restrain them before they did any harm. Then it was just a matter of letting the Porksies do their work. Are you saying they were tempered? Once they'd come back to their senses, they told us everything they could. It seems that just as they were getting close to the tower, they heard an ear-splitting roar. And that was the last thing they remembered. But what worries me most is what they were saying right before they attacked. Glory be. To Garlemald. The Tempered have heretofore ever been thralls to primal entities, yet these hapless souls were compelled to accept a nation as the object of their devotion. This calleth into question all that we know of the condition. Would that the unsettling news ended there. Alas, there is more. Following the earlier reports of missing Amalja, we have learnt that other beast tribes have suffered similar losses. And we now have reason to believe that the abductions are connected to the appearance of the towers. Our scouts sighted black-garbed figures leading shackled Ixel in the direction of the tower in Dravania. The Temple Knights were able to intercept them before they could reach their destination, liberating the Ixel and apprehending their captors, each of whom was found to be equipped with Garlean arms and armor. So the Empire is the common threat. With the support of Xenos, it seems likely that Fandaniel has rallied a faction of the splintered Garlean army to the banner of the Telophoroi. Lord Hien reached the same conclusion when I shared our findings with Doma. The plan had been to march on Garlemald from the east and west in order to force a peace treaty. But the situation has changed. Dealing with the threat of the towers must come first. Given the nature of the enemy, and the proven risk of tempering, I could think of few suitable candidates to aid in this task. But I am confident in my choice. What? Resistant to primal influence as they are, they can investigate the towers without fear of being turned.
We are glad to put our gifts to use, Commander. Gifted or not, going behind enemy lines remains a perilous undertaking. But we must know more if we're to strike back at our foe. I'm counting on you. If it would give us the upper hand, I'd do it a hundred times over. We won't let you down. That concludes the briefing. You two, make ready and join your escort. Are you certain about this, Arunvald? I am. Come on, let's talk outside. So you know, I've already gone through all the formalities at the Rising Stones. Made sure to inform Jamaldvar and Vmar at Ralga's Reach as well. Arunvold, I admire your enthusiasm. But this is far more dangerous than anything you have done before. I know the risks. And I also know what's in store if we don't stop Fan Daniel from carrying out his plan. With this power of mine, I can make a difference. If I stood idly by, I would regret it for the rest of my life. And you, Fudola? Is this what you want? What are you asking me for? It's not like I have any say in the matter. Don't pretend. We both know Commander Aldin gave you a chance to refuse. And you didn't. <clears throat> so the Empire's finished, is it? But that's what they're all saying that the great and glorious Garlemald slit its own throat. And now, from out of its twitching carcass, crawls the Telophoroi with bloody Xenos at its head! I fought for Garlemald. Killed for Garlemald. What was I part of? I need to know. Whatever it is. I need to know. Very well. If your hearts are set on this, I shall not stand in your way. If you've finished with your touching display of camaraderie, I have a question. Which tower are you planning to investigate, exactly? Well, the one in Girabani is said to be tightly guarded. It's patrol after patrol out there, apparently. We'd be spotted before we got anywhere near it. Which is why we've set our sights on the one in Pagalthan instead. There shouldn't be anything like as many Imperials to worry about down there. Even so, I doubt the local Amalja will look kindly on it if they catch you sneaking around in their territory. Fordola and I had a chance to learn the lie of the land in our previous forays there. We might still find trouble, 
but at least we won't lose our way. Well, we'd best not keep them waiting any longer. Mayhap when all of this is over, we could take another trip to Loxeld. I would have you know I've become a rather capable swimmer since our last visit. Ha! <laughs> I'll believe that when I see it. Though, to be fair, getting into deep water does seem to be a scion's lot in life. Take care, eh? It means a lot, you know. You come in with me. I'll still owe you for saving my skin, don't I? Can't return the favour if I'm not there. I dare say you'll get your chance before long. That Van Daniel sounds like a tricky customer. Too much for the likes of me, anyway. But we both know I'd just be another soldier if it weren't for my gift. And I need to be a damn sight more than that given what's coming. I realise I can't hold a candle to a hero like the Warrior of Light or Alfino, for that matter. He might look like he's 12, but he's seen more action than most people see in a lifetime. No, the fact is I'm nothing like them and maybe I never will be. But I'll be damned if I don't try. They're counting on me. On us. So let's give it our all. He does not want for conviction. That much is certain. So let us have faith in him. Him and Fordola both. While they see to the towers, I would attend to another task, chasing down this lunar Bahamut. Ah, oh, bloody thing. Can you hear me? It's Tataru. Oh, I'm happy to say we've managed to find Estinian. I'm sorry to say he went running off again the moment we told him about Bahamut. But he did mutter something about heading to Ishgard, so if you're quick, you might still be able to catch him. Even if we set out this instant, he may already have left by the time we arrive. Have her send the Bonanza to Ishgard. It may prove useful should we need to give chase. Gladly. I'll see to it as soon as Krile and I get back to the Rising Stones. Good luck. While you go off on your Dragoon hunt, Uriange and I will return to headquarters. We have much to tell the others. I wish you every success in your search for our elusive friend. May we all meet again ere long.
No sign of him. Not that I've ever met him before, but the way Alphano goes on about him, I'm fairly sure I could pick him out in a crowd. Speaking of which, it does seem awfully quiet. If the erstwhile Azure Dragoon had returned to Ishgard, would it not be a source of general excitement? First the Scion's coin keeper, and now you. I'm beginning to think these meetings are more than mere coincidence. Not that I'm complaining. It's been too long. Too long? You look an ilm taller and twice as rugged. It suits you, Alphano. Quieter, though. Have you been giving him lessons on how to be the strong, silent type? I... am not... Alphano! If the two of you are such firm friends, perhaps you should remember what he looks like. And what do you mean, rugged? Ugh! Had my brother mentioned what an oaf you are, I'd never have bothered looking for you in the first place. Estinian Wormblood. The Azure Dragoon. He who fought and felled the Dread Worm Nidhogg at the Warrior of Light's side. To think the day would come when I should see this living legend with my own eyes. Someone mind explaining what is going on? Is everything all right? I thought I heard Alizé shouting. Estinian! It's been too long. No, no, it's quite understandable. That was hardly the first time we've been confused for one another. Nor, I suspect, will it be the last. Well, I for one will not be making that mistake again. What I will say, for the second time today, is that you've grown. Inside and out. I can tell. One can't remain a spoiled little lordling forever, you know. At least someone's having a good time. You know when we were growing up, Alphano would never befriend other boys because he couldn't stand the thought of not being in charge. But maybe that's changed. He seems just as happy around Astinian as he does Arenvald. You're joking, aren't you? I'd be glad if someone would take him off my hands. No rest for the righteous, eh? Speaking of which, I was just on my way to borrow an airship to take me to Azisla. Azisla? How could I forget? The dragon with whom Bahamut shared the deepest of bonds. I, Tiamat, his mate. Even now she remains imprisoned on Azisla, though her remorse binds her faster than any shackle. I see. As the one who first summoned Bahamut, you believe she may be able to shine some light on his latest incarnation. Might I suggest that we make the journey to Azisla together? I'm not sure if Tataru mentioned this, but we Scions have an airship of our own now. 
I see no reason why not. Assuming your sister can bear the thought of sharing a deck with me. Be my guest. But confuse me with Alphano again and I'll throw you overboard. I don't know who he thinks he is, but he's nothing like Elfano painted him to be. I will admit, he is not exactly as I imagined him either. Based on what I had read of the man, I think I was expecting someone a little less... blunt? she knows naught of recent events. Perhaps you should enlighten her.
Much like those held here in Asisla. If dragons who worship Bahamut are required to summon him, that must mean. Your children's pain means nothing to them. They laugh at your kind suffering. But tears will not right this wrong, nor will lamentation see the perpetrators punished. Snosk Behavior befitting a great worm. We came here to ask mighty Tiamat of the first brood, consort of Bahamut, mother of the dragons of Maracidia, what she intends to do about the crimes committed against her children. You too were exposed to his influence. That you are yet in possession of your own will is testament to the indomitable strength of your soul. But were you to meet with Bahamut again, you fear you might succumb. Es On the matter of Bahamut's influence, at least, I believe we can be of some assistance. If you're afraid of being enthralled, don't be. We have a cure. And while we've never tried it on one such as you, its basic principles are universal. Usk, she's in. There is no future for those bound to the past. That you committed a terrible sin, I do not dispute. But if you feel remorse, you may yet make amends. We offer you that chance. 
take it, or you will forever remain a prisoner. Not of these cruel shackles, but of your own guilt. Saha and Seth's